thank you so much, Regent President Walsh. And good afternoon, regents, chancellors, uh, provosts, system leaders, colleagues from UW-Madison, and everyone who's here. Uh, I'm really delighted to welcome you all to UW-Madison here on uh, another unseasonably warm day. Uh, it's truly wonderful to be here with all of you. Now, as you know, this has been a year of significant challenges. And so I want to begin with a brief story of hope. A couple of months ago, I had the privilege of sitting in on a fascinating and sometimes somewhat uncomfortable discussion right here in this room. Picture 120 students from different backgrounds, different schools and majors, different places on the political spectrum, gathered in groups of 10, each with a trained faculty facilitator, eating dinner together and having a meaningful conversation about an important issue, in this case, about the flat tax. In months to come, there will continue to be a range of topics, including somewhat polarizing issues like gun rights and abortion. This is a program that we're piloting this year called Deliberation Dinners, designed by our Dean of our School of Education, Diana Hess. It's not meant to change minds or to help the participants reach a consensus, but it is designed to help give them skills to engage with one another productively and respectfully, even when they disagree, to engage across a difference which needs to be a key part of the university experience. The night I sat in, there was plenty of disagreement. The students were raising hard questions about how to define fairness, what strangers owe each other or don't, and debating different ways of contributing to the greater good. At the end of the evening, I saw students who had pretty vehemently disagreed with each other walk out of the room together chatting about how they were going to spend their weekend or the best places to study for final exams. We're a research institution, so we will also research whether this program's working and decide whether to continue it. And I don't know whether this pilot program will turn into something bigger. But I do know we need better ways to help our students and our communities connect across their differences as we navigate the really challenging times that we're living in, where what's happening on a global, national, and state level certainly will continue to affect us. Globally, let me just make sure this is, there we go. Globally, the brutal attack by Hamas on Israeli civilians and the ongoing devastating war in Gaza continue to have a grave and co complex impact on our faculty, staff, students, and alums. All across the country, we've seen a deeply concerning rise in both anti-Semitism and Islamophobia, and we unequivocally condemn both. And here on our campus, I've heard from Jewish and Muslim students that they have felt at times unseen or unheard, or judged or stereotyped based on their identities. At the same time, we've been fortunate compared to a great many others of our peer schools where these issues have caused much deeper and uglier divides. That's not to say we haven't dealt with some major challenges here too. And these have sometimes been made more complex by divisive politics nationally as well. One of the things that all of higher education will need to reckon with is the intersection between the First Amendment and Title VI, which protects students' rights to an educational experience free of severe and pervasive forms of discrimination and harassment. These important values can come into some tension with one another. And indeed, the Department of Education has opened an investigation at more than 100 campuses across the country, including ours, to find out more about how they've been handling these issues. And here in Wisconsin, we're navigating state politics in challenging times. And I want to acknowledge that this has not been easy. And I want to express my appreciation for all of you 
for your thoughtful approaches and engagement. I also want to be clear that diversity of all kinds is a core value for us, and we cannot and will not stop our work in this realm, full stop. At the same time, we can and should take a fresh look at what we want to accomplish and assess what we've achieved over years of investment and where there might be space or need to try something different. I believe that within the agreement we've reached with the legislature, we can stay true to the values that sustain us and we can continue to build inclusive excellence so that no matter your background, identity, experience, beliefs, or perspective, you can feel that you belong at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. This array of issues isn't easy, and it won't be. These issues will challenge us, and we will rise to meet these challenges in many different ways, including with programs like the deliberation dinners and in lots of other programs, experiments, and efforts, programs built around the Wisconsin idea tradition of innovation for the public good, a tradition that's allowed us to make the world a better place for 175 years. So let me give you a brief tour of some of the spaces where we're currently excellent and some of the ways we're going to try some innovative things to bring us into a future that's even brighter than our storied past. To begin, it's been a year of excellence in education. There's sometimes a national narrative that students enroll in college, rack up a lot of debt, and then don't graduate. And that is certainly not true for us. Our four-year graduation rate rose to 75.5%, its highest ever. Our six-year graduation rate rose to just over 89%, also the highest ever, and we're in the top 10 for six-year graduation rates of public universities in the United States. As some of you might have heard this morning, our student-athlete graduation rate also hit a record high this year. 93% of our student-athletes graduate within six years. The average time to degree for a bachelor's degree recipient decreased to 3.84 calendar years, its shortest ever. The university conferred a record number of total, total degrees, 12,407, topping 12,000 for the first time in our history. And 65%, nearly two-thirds of our undergraduates graduated with no student debt last year. You've heard me say before that a world-class university and our Universities of Wisconsin system needs diversity of all kinds. When people of diverse identities experiences, backgrounds, and beliefs work together. They not only learn from one another, but they also drive creativity and innovation and come up with better solutions to problems. So I'm happy to share that the current class of freshmen and new transfer students is the most racially diverse in our history. And that freshman class includes Wisconsin students from tiny rural counties and big urban centers. In fact, 71 of the 72 Wisconsin counties are represented. This year, we're missing iron, so let's, we'll try to change that next year. And students from 49 of the 50 states, we're missing Maine, and 60 countries around the world. This is the kaleidoscopic fabric that makes us great. It's also been a fantastic year for research at UW-Madison. We brought in more research dollars last year than in any year in our history. Sometimes big increases can be driven by just one remarkable grant, but that's not the case here. More than 15 departments and institutes had major increases, from space science and engineering to plant pathology to the Population Health Institute. Part of this results from efforts to get a little bit more strategic, to better align ourselves with federal funding priorities. Our research related to aging is a great example. 
The over 65 population in the U.S. grew faster over the past 10 years than at any time since the late 1800s. And we positioned ourselves years ago to become a leader in this arena by building big interdisciplinary research centers with the right mix of expertise to innovate across disciplines. And now, some of our biggest leaps in grant funding this year were for our longitudinal studies and our work around Alzheimer's prevention. And you might have seen the news just weeks ago of our new $150 million grant to lead a national study out of the School of Medicine and Public Health to expand understanding of the full range of problems in the brain that can cause dementia and to bring us closer to better treatments. And it is the largest NIH grant that we've ever received. We're now asking, what are other fields where we can position the university for major discovery and innovation with impact? And I'll tell you about some plans in just a couple of minutes. First, I want to show you a few numbers. We maintained our spot as the number eight uh, largest research university in the country, measured by research expenditures. But there's a bigger story here. And I'll also note that in our strategic plan, we do have the goal, in the system-wide strategic plan, we have the goal of getting to, six, to number six. In the past year, we grew faster than anyone else in the top 10 except Duke. And our five-year average growth rate is second only to Johns Hopkins. And if you look at the three institutions above us, we didn't catch up with them, but we gained on all of them. The gap between us and UCSD is now just $10 million. In 2021, we were also just behind UCSD, but we trailed them by $45 million. And we do have some strategies to power us forward that I'll tell you about shortly. I also do want to say very clearly, not all first-rate research is grant-funded research. We have many ways that we engage and do important work at our institution. And so we need to remember that while this is one important frame for a good portion of what we do in the research space, it does not capture the whole. And it's very important for us all to remember that as well. I'll say just a brief word about our state's new designation as a regional technology and innovation hub for biohealth and personalized medicine, which President Rothman also mentioned, and which you'll hear about also at tomorrow's morning's panel discussion. This was fundamentally an opportunity for partnership, for partnerships across the state to work together in a next level way. And it paid off. There were 400 regions across the country competing for this designation, and only 31 were selected. And so I am great, very grateful for that partnership in so many ways, including with the whole system and many, many other partners. But I also do need to say that our powerhouse research enterprise played a crucial role in tipping the scales. It is difficult to imagine that we would have gotten the designation without it. We're now competing for significant funding that will go to probably fewer than 10 of the 31 hubs. And we should know more by summer, so stay tuned. Now, one necessary ingredient for bringing in major grants and growing our research is a modern physical infrastructure. And this year, we made some good progress on some key facilities. Babcock Hall and our Center for Dairy Research, our doctors on call to Wisconsin's dairy industry, had not been updated in any significant way since back when Harry Truman was president. As of last spring, we now have, we have the largest state-of-the-art dairy facility in the nation. And it's already transforming innovation in research and education and our work with partners from one of the state's most important industries. The long-awaited expansion of the School of Veterinary Medicine is close to completion. The first two floors, housing surgery, critical care, imaging, and a number of labs will be opening this spring. 
and that will enhance significantly our ability to provide care for animals, large and small. And it's been so exciting to see the School of Computer, Data, and Information Sciences take shape. It's really coming together, not quite as fast as in this video. Uh, and it will be the anchor for our high-tech corridor that's going to link computing to biomedical research, to engineering, to medicine. It will bring together partners from all over campus and beyond to ignite discovery and innovation to help power Wisconsin's growing tech sector. And just as importantly, it will be the campus home for our largest major, computer science, and our fastest growing major, data science, and a place that welcomes all students from all majors to expand their learning in these critical areas. The ability to synthesize, analyze, and translate large complex sets of data spans nearly all the disciplines on our campus. And of course, we know that AI is growing increasingly important too. And more on that in just a minute. With the help of the regents, the legislature, Governor Evers, and what I think is the biggest, broadest coalition of business and industry partners that we've ever assembled, at this point I am hopeful that we are finally on our way to replacing an engineering facility that was last renovated nearly 40 years ago. As you know, this facility was the UW system's number one priority and will be jointly funded by us and the state. We already have donor uh, strong interest in funding 110 million of the 150 million that we're committed to raising. And our already energetic fundraising team has now kicked into even higher gear. This building will allow us to create a total of about 1,000 new spaces for undergraduates in engineering at a time when, with, when Wisconsin employers desperately need more engineers. And while we have terrific engineering programs throughout the universities of Wisconsin system, we are also sending too many Wisconsin students to places like Illinois and Purdue. This building will also enhance our ability to support top scholars from around the world to come and be part of what we are doing here to drive the kinds of discoveries and innovations that will allow us to take on grand challenges. And it will expand our ability to work with industry partners. We have some exciting things taking place with partners from industry all over campus. In November, for example, we announced a 10-year collaboration between our School of Medicine and Public Health and GE Healthcare. And that's what you're seeing in that picture. I want to thank the regents for approving this agreement. It builds on work we've been doing together for the last decade, with a new focus on developing the next frontier of technologies for diagnosing and treating diseases like cancer in ever more personalized and precise ways. Our long partnership with GE Healthcare has now fueled more than 130 research projects. It's a great example of the ways in which industry investment that aligns with our mission can drive discovery and help us change and improve lives. So further building these partnerships is a substantial priority. Now you saw that we're number eight in overall research expenditures, but we're number 46 in industry investment in R&D. Now that's up from number 52 last year, and perhaps 46 is a little more impressive when you know that it's out of 900 institutions. But still, we can do better. And I think we are on the right track. If you look at growth in dollars alone, $8.9 million, our increase puts us in seventh place among the top 10 for growth last year. But if you look at percentage terms, we grew by 28%, faster than any other school in the top 10. And this isn't just a one great year story. We have outpaced some of our competitors in the top 10 since 2018. It's important to note that our industry engagements go well beyond research and well beyond Wisconsin's major employers. University expertise is helping to build thriving businesses and vibrant downtowns all over the state. And that is part of the Wisconsin idea. 
and certainly one of our greatest statewide ambassadors, is the Division of Extension. I spent half a day with a group of Extension employees in November and learned about the incredible range of work they're doing in all of Wisconsin's 72 counties. And I've also had a chance to visit with Extension in a variety of places across the state. To give you just a couple of examples, they recently held facili facilitated conversations in 32 counties across the state to bring people from different sides of the political spectrum together to talk about hot button, button issues. Interestingly, afterwards, participants reported viewing one another as less hypocritical and less selfish than had been their previous stereotype. They're also nourishing entrepreneurship in rural areas, as well as our cities, to create the kinds of opportunities that help people and communities to flourish. Now, these are just two of the huge number of projects that they do, and they're having significant impact. But they're sometimes so woven into the fabric of the state that people don't realize that Extension is UW-Madison or even the universities of Wisconsin more broadly. And so I am challenging our Extension leadership and employees to do an even better job of sharing the impact of their work and to sharing that they're part of us. So we have a lot to be proud of, I think, and I hope you'll agree. But my job, our job, is to make this institution even a step stronger by building on our existing excellence and also by thinking in big, bold ways about where we can take a quantum leap forward to serve this state and the world. And so let me tell you about a few of the things in store this year. First, we're putting together an outstanding new class. We just received final numbers for applicants for the next freshman year, and we have continued our 15-year record-setting streak. Nearly 66,000 applicants applied, 66,000 students applied for a spot in our freshman class, an increase of about 3.7% over last year. Students and families are continuing to recognize that exciting things are happening here at UW-Madison. We also have two initiatives we've launched and about which you've heard, but I'm still going to say a little bit here, to improve access and remove barriers for talented Wisconsin students, especially with high financial need. A year ago in this space, I announced one of those programs, Bucky's Pell Pathway, for Wisconsin students who qualify for the federal Pell Grant. It's a last dollar in scholarship that sits on top of Pell Grants and other scholarships the students might be receiving and it covers the full cost of attendance. Yes, tuition, but also expected costs for room and board, fees, books, living expenses for talented students from Wisconsin families who have the greatest need to come here to UW-Madison. I'm delighted to tell you that in its first year, Bucky's Pell Pathway is serving 977 students from 65 Wisconsin counties. And our Bucky's Pell Pathway students are outstanding. Let me introduce you to just one of them. This is Maddie Place. She's a freshman from Platteville who plans to major in business. She was class president for all four years of high school. She played the flute and band and she participated in numerous student clubs, all while earning outstanding grades in a rigorous curriculum. In other words, she's exactly the kind of student who belongs at our state's flagship. But her family's finances haven't always been stable. So when she got word that she qualified for Bucky's Pell Pathway, she told us she was completely shocked. She relayed the excitement of sharing the news with her mom and the relief she felt knowing she could come here and just focus on being a student without constant worry about bills or a substantial debt load. That's the impact of this great program. I also want to mention the new Wisconsin Tribal Educational Promise Program. 
This is a program that we designed in partnership with tribal leaders. And you might have seen coverage when we announced it in December. It will cover the full cost of a UW-Madison undergraduate degree for state residents who are members of federally recognized Indian tribes in Wisconsin. And it will apply starting this fall for incoming students and current students. We've also begun a five-year pilot to cover in-state tuition and fees for enrolled members of tribes in Wisconsin to pursue JD degrees and MD degrees, law degrees and medical school degrees, given the pressing need for these professions in the Native communities. And I want to thank the tribal leaders who worked in partnership with us to design this program. One important note, both Bucky's Pell Pathway and the Wisconsin Educational Tribal Promise Program are funded fully by the university without any state tax dollars contributing. Now looking forward, how do we innovate for the public good in education even more than we are right now? Now building educational excellence takes more than recruiting outstanding students and helping them graduate on time. It also takes outstanding classroom experiences. Many of you heard this morning how we're using AI in education and how many of our students have transformative experiences in research. And I'm so glad those of you who were here for part of the education session got to hear from our truly exceptional students. I love, though, also that our instructors are often also looking for small things that can make a meaningful difference to improve learning. And it's an important lesson that while we do want big and bold initiatives, Little things matter, too. This is Brianna Burton, and she's a faculty member here. And that climbing wall picture is something she shows her students at the start of the semester to explain her role as an educator, that it will provide support for students as they navigate their way to the top. One of the classes she teaches is about 60 students from a wide variety of majors. And it covers, among other topics, how different kinds of bacteria organize their DNA. The process she's she, she teaches is so new that there weren't any great textbook images for her to use. She was using what you can see on the left, pulled from a research article. And that required students to try to visualize a three-dimensional process that was brand new to them. And many of them found that tough to do. And so she started using this instead. The media team at the Center for Teaching, Learning, and Mentoring worked with her to bring the image to life and to make it into a 3D animation that could make more sense. She compared test results from two different classes, before and after, and found that with the hard copy 2D images, 57% demonstrated that they understood that concept, and it went up to 80% with the animation. We often talk about the bigger, splashier changes we're making in education, but these small hinges can open big doors, and we try to create infrastructure to support our faculty in being able to tweak their classes to make them better, too. Moving on to research. Maintaining and advancing discovery on this campus is going to require us to work collectively and strategically to build strength for the future. And so, in my remaining time with you, I'm pleased to share with you three ways that we're doing just that. One is about nourishing and advancing entrepreneurship to help bring more UW-Madison research and innovations out of our labs and classrooms and out of the great ideas of those in our community and into the world. A second is to greatly expand our work in and our commitment to sustainability which includes creating a new sustainability research hub, and then a new initiative to catalyze our excellence to address some of the world's grand challenges. First, entrepreneurship. This is still in its early stages, but my goal is to help take our already thriving hubs of innovation and entrepreneurial excellence and make it even stronger. And I. I've appointed this mighty all-star team to take a close look at how we can do what we're already doing even better. 
How can we knit together the many programs that already exist? Which of them are working best? Which might need tweaking around our campus? How can we make them easier to tap into and even more successful? And where do we have the opportunity, both ourselves and in partnership, to try some new and different things to support the great many faculty, staff, and students who are interested in entrepreneurship and commercialization. There's more than 400 companies all over Wisconsin that have their origin stories here at UW-Madison. And they range from industry leaders like Epic or Shine to small startups, some of which are growing, founded by our students like Fetch Rewards and Eat Streets and so many more, including more than 25 companies founded by faculty and students in our Department of Medical Physics. Our UW, entrepreneur, our UW Madison entrepreneurs are changing lives in communities. They're creating jobs, and they're contributing hundreds of millions of dollars to the state's economy. At the same time, our students are pursuing entrepreneurship education like never before. We've had a 700% growth in enrollment in classes in these areas over the last 15 years. And this state has emerged as a national powerhouse in high growth areas like the life sciences, thanks to the entrepreneurial ecosystems we've built here. And so it's clear this is an area where we've been doing some pretty great things, but where there are also likely further opportunities to magnify our economic impact on Wisconsin, to shepherd life-changing innovations out into the world, and to strengthen this state's economy broadly. This working group is engaging broadly in conversations within and well outside our institution, and will bring me some recommendations later this spring, so stay tuned. Next, I'm really excited to announce that we're launching a major cross-campus initiative around environmental sustainability focused on advancing not only our research, but also education, and making UW-Madison a living laboratory for sustainable practices. This is a place where we've been pioneers in many ways, from ecology and wildlife biology, to land restoration, to the use of satellite technology to detect changes in the environment. We have an impressive list of past accomplishments. But these alone don't qualify us to be a world leader in sustainability. What I think does qualify us to lead is the particular way in which we often engage with the work, which is quite simply to start with looking at real world concrete problems, leaning into the pragmatism that is so naturally UW. Many of our accomplishments in this space have begun not in a university lab, but in the community wading into trout streams with people who fish, walking the north woods with hunters, visiting dairy farms, talking with urban farmers in Milwaukee. The very essence of the Wisconsin idea. The community engagement drives and shapes cutting edge environmental research and scholarship. This is what we owe to our neighbors and to Wisconsin as settlers on native land, as beneficiaries of public funds, and as educators preparing our students to make a real difference in the world. And so I'm very excited to announce this initiative. And I really want to thank the Nelson Institute and the Office of Sustainability, along with our ASM Student Advisory Council on Sustainability, all of which, all of whom, have played significant roles in helping us to be able to announce this today. And I think we may have some of our students from ASM in the room. Do we? Raise your hands. Yes. Let's give them a round of applause. I really appreciate the way that they've helped lead in this space and also their creativity and the further work they're going to do um, with respect to these important questions. So I'm really excited to announce this initiative. And you can see the goals on this next slide. They're also in the handouts that you should have. I won't take the time to go through all of them, but a few comments on a couple of our goals. First, addressing the environmental impact on our of our campus, which is both imperative and an outstanding opportunity to do some innovative things. 
And so we're setting for the first time some clear and defined campus-wide targets in this space. And that's essential on a campus the size of a city where we'll only succeed if we define what success looks like and work together. Like our environmental research, this initiative will be very community focused because what happens on our campus affects our neighbors. As just one example, when we moved from coal power to gas power, Dane County's air quality improved. Our students are brimming with ideas for making our campus a living laboratory. And in fact, some of you may have seen the demo outside earlier today where some of our students are developing ways to try to grow plants while also creating solar energy. And I know they're going to inspire a number of future initiatives as well as ones that we've already begun. And I'm also very excited to see how we're able to weave this work more intentionally into our curriculum, something we already do, but I think we can do more of. I also wanna make mention of the Sustainability Research Hub. This will be a center of excellence intentionally designed to build on our long tradition of working across. At many universities, such hubs are often embedded in one school or one college, and that's not how we're doing it here. To jumpstart it, I'm fully funding it initially out of my office, locating it in our Nelson Institute, and they're working to ensure that every researcher in every discipline on campus can make use of it if they wish to so that they'll have the resources and the opportunity to pursue sustainability research if they want to. And we can do still more to break down barriers and tear down silos. The final project I'm gonna to talk to you about today is our Quantum Leap, and I'm thrilled to be announcing it. I wanna introduce you to the Wisconsin RISE Initiative, where RISE stands for Research, Innovation, and Scholarly Excellence. We're going to look at the grand challenges facing our state and the world and work to grow our faculty in a targeted way that builds on our existing strengths in places where with strategy and investment, we can accelerate discovery and world-changing research, where we can improve education and innovate for the public good and be absolutely best in class. Because here at UW-Madison, we want to rise to meet the biggest research challenges of our time. Over the last months, Provost Isbell and I have been in discussions with the deans, and they've been in discussions with their faculty and others to arrive at three key goals. First, to recruit top scholars from multiple disciplines at all stages of their careers, to bring interdisciplinary perspectives to many facets of deeply complex and important areas and problems. Second, to focus in meaningful part on areas with the potential to attract significant extramural research funding, as well as philanthropy, to further drive discovery and get us closer to any number of moonshots. And third, to create exciting educational opportunities for our students at all levels. Now, as this initiative progresses, there will be several foci. Each will be interdisciplinary, and each will involve a number of our schools and colleges. And I'm pleased to tell you that in addition to announcing the initiative, I'm delighted that, to announce the first RISE focus area, which will be artificial intelligence. You heard about that, those of you who participated in education, you heard about its importance earlier today. This capitalizes on our strengths in data science and computer science, and also pulls in social sciences, human ecology, the humanities, to put people at the center of our solutions so that we can work to make sure that AI works for all of us. AI and machine learning are already enhancing human abilities in every one of our disciplines and offering extraordinarily powerful tools that allow us to sift through huge quantities of data to find patterns and trends that guide decision making and help solve problems. And our past discoveries and innovations in related areas are a launch pad, I think, to a dazzling future. To give just one example, Professor Miron Livni, 
uh, pioneered high-throughput computing techniques that are now powering some of the world's largest scientific experiments, including the search for cosmic neutrinos and black holes, an example about, of how new techniques can create new opportunities. Today, that work is part of what positions us to move forward in exciting new directions. And again, to give just one example, uh, Juan Casado is an investigator at the Morgridge Institute who's now applying Professor Livney's techniques to biological imaging, which could turbocharge our understanding of cell biology and help us discover new drugs. And this is just one area. Our faculty, staff, and students are already using AI in all kinds of exciting ways. To give just a couple of examples, the College of Agricultural and Life Sciences is using it to help farmers predict ye crop yields and detect disease before it spreads. The Center for Healthy Minds is exploring how to de develop personalized micro supports delivered through our mobile devices. For example, to engage a student in a breathing exercise just before an exam. And just last week, one of our undergraduate entrepreneur students, who's built his own small consulting gig around the ethical use of AI, led a workshop for faculty and staff in the School of Journalism and Mass Communication entitled, AI as Your Teaching Co-Pilot. There are tremendous possibilities and tremendous concerns. AI needs expert human guidance and ethical guardrails. And we are also on the leading edge of scholarship that can help ensure the ethical, responsible, and trustworthy use of AI. And so there's genuinely transformative potential with high stakes, great possibilities, and significant risks. And we already have a good number of talented faculty in a variety of relevant disciplines working in this space. And so we have a very strong foundation on which to build. And so AI was, in some ways, perhaps just a natural choice to be the first focus area for our Wisconsin RISE initiative. We'll begin hiring soon. It's late in this season, but we'll begin a little bit even this spring and continue in phases with the ultimate goal of, through this initiative, hiring up to 50 more new faculty into this initiative than we would have been likely to do without this project. We are fortunate that our growth in enrollment and our growth in research gives us this kind of opportunity to grow our faculty and the necessity to do so. Wisconsin RISE will open up not just research opportunities, but also exciting pathways in education at both the undergraduate and graduate levels. It's simply a fact that every student in every major is going to need at least some familiarity and facility with AI. And investing in this way will give us, I think, a virtuous circle, a virtuous cycle, where the university will be positioned to compete for research funding, both federal and private, on a new level, which will invest in the ability to do more discovery and innovation, which in turn attracts great faculty, which in turn attracts great students, and lets us do even more in the classroom as well. The AI initiative is our first RISE initiative, but it will be the first of several. We are also rolling out a process that will continue to invite our faculty, staff, and campus leaders to work across disciplines to advance further bold ideas that can change the world. The deans are helping to spearhead the process to bring the strongest of those ideas to the provost and me for consideration for the next several RISE initiatives. As you can probably tell, I'm very excited to see how Wisconsin RISE will help ignite creativity even further and enhance our ability to take on the most pressing challenges of our time. And I really want to thank our provost and all of the deans and the considerable number of faculty who have already been deeply involved in thinking this through and putting it together. So let me conclude with this. As I hope you can tell, I'm pretty bullish on this amazing university, and I hope that you are too. This is an incredible institution. And even in challenging times, there is an extraordinary amount to be proud of. We are proud of what we are accomplishing here at UW-Madison. And we are proud to be part of the universities of Wisconsin. 
all of which are committed to providing transformative opportunities to students all over our great state. We are meeting the moment in many ways, as we have for 175 years, and doing so with integrity and discipline and a spirit of cooperation. And that is thanks to the incredible community of partners that are part of what we're doing, including our phenomenally talented faculty, staff, and students, the most loyal and dedicated alums and donors anywhere, our collaborators across industry and communities, and certainly our partners at the other universities of Wisconsin campuses and in the UW administration, and all of you, members of the Board of Regents, who provide the leadership and oversight to support and guide our work. These are the ingredients for a dazzling future, and I am looking forward to building that together with all of you. Thank you very much, and I'm happy to take questions if you wish.